Welcome to Drinking Bros, presented by GhostBed.com. We've done a lot on this show. Uh, by a lot, I mean pretty much everything you can imagine in this life, I feel like. Yeah. Uh, between the five of us, six of us. Over time, yeah. Over time. Between the six of us, uh, let's, we'll start with Black Rifle Coffee was created. Yep. This podcast <clears throat> was created. Ross Patterson Revolution podcast was created. Range 15 was created. Another movie called Drinking Bros Live, the Shaved Eagle Tour, was created. A whiskey company uh, that's on our back shelf over there. I'm going to pop on out to that wide. Uh, Lead Slinger's Whiskey was <laughs> created. And also, we became New York Times bestselling authors. What else is there left to do except for run for politics? <laughs> yeah, I think uh, once you've achieved everything in life, um, you're a father. Yes. I probably am. Yes. Uh, or you will be someday. Yeah, I would say so, yeah. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, it's, that's pretty much all that's left is to run for office, to satiate our egos, which are massive, by the way. Huge, huge egos. Uh, we can't help it. No. So it is what it is. So we're, we're, we're going to have to run for office. I feel like Clint Eastwood at this point. Where Clint just said, fuck it, I've made a million movies, might as well become mayor of Carmel. Yeah, if you don't know what Carmel is, it's the <laughs> richest and whitest city in America. Uh, they have the weirdest law. Dogs are allowed everywhere. But you can't really wear heels if you're a woman because there's cobblestone streets still. Yeah. It's a very bizarre place, but very nice as well. Very nice. Beautiful this time of year. It's beautiful uh, every time. Every of single yeah. second of the yeah. year. Cake job, and it's one of those where when Clint Eastwood dies, he'll be like, oh, man, Academy Award winner. And uh, he was also mayor of his own town <clears throat> one time. Now, ours is a little different. Uh, our second highest downloaded episode of the year was when I went scorched earth against the school board for New Hanover County. Mm -hmm. I've been going back and forth with these fucks for a while now and still haven't changed anything. We're down to the, the last few weeks of it. And I, look, I'll, I'll just I'll be blunt with you. You and I have been mulling this over for a while now. We're, we're actually going to run for the Board of Education, and we're going to do it together, which is allowed in this city. Yeah. So we're, we're allowed to campaign together. We're allowed to do all of our events together. We're allowed to essentially help each other get into office. There is three seats available on the new Hanover Board of Education for 2020. And who are those people? Uh, I, will, I will read them off right now. Uh, David Wartman is up. Uh, no, I, I, I believe I like that guy. Well, you, you wait and then let me know about that. Uh, Lisa Estep uh -huh. is up. And then one more. I believe it's Jeanette Nichols. Uh, yeah, I believe it's Jeanette Nichols. Jeanette's, uh, she's, a, she's a little older gal. Um, so I don't know if I want to go hard <clears throat> against Jeanette. I will. I don't think my grandmother's name was Jeanette. I, I think one of the problems in America right now in general <laughs> is old people. <laughs> I knew this is coming from you. Draining our resources. Yeah. Yeah. Right? They don't and have children they're, they're in all, the school district. They're casting their opinion from a time of irrelevance. Yeah. Right? That shit doesn't exist anymore. This <clears throat> this boomer, okay boomer, by the way, is dead already. Uh this boomer fucking mentality is gone. It doesn't fit in the modern world. Get the fuck out of here. Right? Yeah. Um, and then people, she's probably been on the board for like 90 years. You know, there was, it's <laughs> funny. So I, I've done a lot of research on this. And ironically, our paperwork is due December 3rd, which is the same day they're making the redistricting decision. Um, and a lot of people have been on a lot of these boards. And it's, it's strange, man. Like, because until you actually get into it. Mm hmm really really dive into it you don't realize how many people have been sitting on all these boards for years and years and years. oh yeah uh, in every city and i think that's why this that particular episode we did resonated with so many people where yep. it's like <clears throat> hey man this is these are problems that 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 people are going through all across america however their voice isn't big enough to be heard right and so therefore they just kind of get fucked along the way it happens a lot yeah i think the worst thing for america is entrenched politicians yeah and that, that's that's where the entire trump <clears throat> doctrine came from to drain the swamp well we're gonna drain the creek we are and and, and why are we draining the creek this is the home of dawson's creek 
This is where it was shot. This is where it was filmed. And One Tree Hill, by the way. One Tree Oh, don't even get me started on One Jared's Tree Hill. Jared's favorite show was One Tree Hill. Same. Or the OC, one of the two. Uh, one Tree Hill was mine. Uh, back in the day, it was, it was Dawson's Creek. And, and I said to myself after the first episode, where do they shoot that? Because it is gorgeous. Wilmington, North Carolina. Great. I want to live there someday. Mm-hmm. Uh, knew Vanderbeek a little bit through a friend of a friend. I got mm-hmm. to chat with him a few times. <laughs> he had a dope-ass place down by the river here. It was like, this is the greatest city ever. Uh, obviously know some of the folks from, from One Tree Hill. Mm-hmm. And I uh, got a chance to chat with them. Uh, I got it rocked with one, one of the leads uh, in, in France, of all places. Um, great fucking guy. And <laughs> one of the leads on One Tree Hill. And I was like, hey, man, is Wilmington <laughs> as amazing as it seems? And he was like, yeah, dude, it's, it's fucking incredible. So move here. Uh, go to the realtors and say, hey, man, find me a neighborhood that I will never, ever be redistrict. It happened to me twice as a kid. Yeah. Fucking sucked. And we're doing seven shows a week. We're trying to do more, by the way. And it's going gonna, it's gonna <clears> to <throat> fuck up my commute. And I, I was trying to figure out why. Because uh, I'm looking at all these maps and I'm like, man. Why they would redistrict. Yes. I mean, usually it's a classroom size kind of deal. Correct. And yeah. then uh, also there's busing issues. And if you're not familiar with the phrase busing, if you don't follow the news and shit. Mm-hmm. Um, it seems like that wire is in front of our camera. Is that, does that look like it is? Is it, Jamie? What do you think? Uh, at any you rate. You would be able to see it. Yeah. Great. You'd think you'd be able to see it. It looks yeah. like it's, it's like directly in front of it. Uh, anyways, I'm super high, though, so who knows? Yeah. At any rate, I, and I'm running for office for school board. So yeah. <laughs> what was I talking about? <laughs> Being high <laughs> and what that's like. So in busing, America. busing. Yeah. No, is, I, and uh, I went through busing as well, by the way. Yeah, busing is like if there's incongruity. So if you have a poor school and a rich school, and all the inner city uh, minority kids are going to the poor school, and all the fucking suburb, suburban, you know, wealthier families are in the other school, they'll bus people to the different schools to integrate people better. It's part of uh, uh, what do you call it? Uh, the fucking Civil Rights Act. Yeah, it all came out of that stuff. Brown versus board. <laughs> Yeah. At any rate, uh, it happens for legitimate reasons sometimes. This one, it seems like there's a couple of people on the, redist- on the board who are going to benefit very greatly from it. That old white dude. I don't yeah. remember his name. What's his name? Well, so, so here's the thing. Do, uh, do, do a little show um, <clears throat> with uh, Alex Jones called InfoWars. And I talked about this, my, my problem on, on this. Uh, funny thing about InfoWars, he's got about 36 million listeners. Uh, we've got 6.4 on this show. Uh, you think he's crazy. You think Alex Jones is crazy. And you're like, man, you're going in for words. Ugh, it's it's mm-hmm. going to be crazy. Weird thing is, people do feel compelled to send you information. A lot of people sent me the private emails and text messages of all the board members. Now, I've got to get these verified. They're over there right now. I've got to get these verified. Um, luckily, <laughs> we have some friends in some high places here uh, that can tell me if this is, these are true. I, looking at them, I really don't have any reason to believe they aren't uh, at this point. But uh, the, the one that stood out the most out of all of this was Bill Rivenbark. Now, Bill Rivenbark. Rivenbark is a family name around here that's <laughs> yeah. tantamount to, like, uh, I don't know, uh, uh, Bush or Clinton. You know what I mean? Not, not politically, so to speak, but I, I guess it would be more, sort of. It'd be more like Rockefeller. Like, there's a lot of wealth in that name in this area of the country. Yeah, and, and it's odd <laughs> because the, the name Rivenbark around here, they're not all related. However, there is a lot of known Rivenbarks. Like, there's an mm-hmm. attorney, there's uh, someone else. And I was like, man, I, can't, I kept saying this name Rivenbark all over signs. Turns out uh, we got another lifer in his brother, Charlie. Yeah. Charlie's been on the city council for 20 something years at this point. Uh, Bill uh, happens, he was just a normal dude working on an ABC. That's it. Normal dude. Um, when I looked at the redistricting map, however, there was four neighborhoods that were about 1.3 miles south of me. So they got to drive 1.3 miles and then past my neighborhood and then to the elementary school that I'm supposed to go to. And I thought it seemed odd. Uh, one of these e- emails that was sent to me uh, said, hey, man, probably looking at Bill Rivenbark. Turns out, Bill Rivenbark lives on Captain's Lane. Now, magically, as of today's date, his neighborhood and uh, the, the three beyond it are in. Uh, he just started running. It, like, he just got elected the year before. Yep. He has a lot to gain with the property values going up there. And he does not have any children in school. He appears to be in his 60s. 60-year-old man, maybe 65-ish. 
Maybe older. I don't know. Yeah, he's, Maybe he looks he's, good for his age. He's old. Yeah. Uh, so he's definitely going to benefit. He's going to benefit financially. Financially. And, and it, it, the, the other part of this is his brother, who is, uh, again, on city council. city council, Charlie, appears from these text messages and emails, who, who was the one who talked him into it and said, hey, man, you can just basically run off of name recognition, mm. get in. You don't really have to do anything because, you know, you were never in politics. You've never done anything before, but you can coast off that last name. And it turns yeah. out he was right. So it looks like, and again, we're not making any presumptions here because I don't know the guy. Uh, all I know is that he's clearly voting in his own best interest and has no, like nothing. Uh, uh, he doesn't have kids or anything. So it's not like an, it's not a, it's not a, an issues based vote for him. No, right. I, he's got grandkids, but my, my thing is this, right? You're so far south that when you look at these maps, it is impossible to say that you were unbiased in this uh, when clearly right. you had a fucking hand in this, Bill Rivenbark. Um, and the beauty of it is he's not up, so he's not up for re-election. So should he stay after all of this, you're going to be sitting next to the two of us for the next four years, two years, Bill, because I'll get you out of there in two. Oh, yeah, well... We'll, we'll set God up forbid fuck. our third co-host move here. We'll um, set up a super pack for whoever runs against him. Yeah. I want to talk about name recognition. Currently, Drinking Bros is number one in four states. North Carolina happens to be one of them. Yep. So, look, man, uh, we're going to be going real hard over the next year. Here's what I think about politics. There's two reasons you should get in. One is that you're, uh, you care about the issues, mm-hmm. which is this, and, and this example, this is you. You have a child in that school. And about to have two because you can see from the ground level how these decisions at the at the macro level affect day to day people, and that's an important perspective to have in politics. Mm-hmm. I, on the other hand, am dispassionate about the whole thing. None of this affects me, and I don't think you should be able to. You need a good balance of both of those things uh, on a governing body. You need people that are dispassionate and uninterested in the outcome, except for that the outcome is good for the most amount of people. Mm -hmm. And you need people who understand the day-to-day issues and what's going on on the ground. Now, that's why our Congress and Senate are so fucked, because it's people who have been in office for 80 goddamn years, and they've made like a massive amount of wealth just by being a part of the government. Not from the government, but by being a part of it, which is way worse. I would rather the government pay them a fuckload of money than have them use their influence to make money in the private sector because that's corrupt as fuck, yeah. right? The only way to defeat corruption is to have people like us on your fucking governing body. Yeah, and that's going to happen next year because uh, the part of this other redistricting <laughs> committee, and I'm, I'm not psyched with this either, was they had a, a committee of 14 people. They were all white. Uh, some parents complained in July, and they threw in one black lady on there. Uh, a, lot of, a lot of correspondence going back and forth about that one as well. If we just add one, that will quell everybody's worries. No, no, it doesn't. It's 13 to 1, and that's not fair either because, let's face it, we do have black communities in Wilmington. Why you decided to pick 14 white people, I don't know. Uh, the other interesting part about all of these candidates who ran was – they wanted to run on transparency. Every single one of them said, ah, we want to be transparent. We want to be transparent with our decisions. We want everybody to know what's going on. What's the first thing they did when they redistrict these schools? They hired an outside firm from another state, Ohio. Which the one school board member we talked to mm-hmm. said he was against it, like completely against that and got overruled on it, which means there, there are forces at work here. There are. I, we think. Now, again, <laughs> politicians will tell you a- a- everything. You don't really know unless you get in and you actually run and you actually win and get in there and see what's going on. Yep. The beauty of what we do for a living is we don't have to report to anybody. Nope. Uh, don't need to take anybody's <laughs> money. Um, don't, I don't need anything uh, other than the same exact neighborhood where I live, the same schools that are within two miles of my house, both elementary and middle that's really all I need. I, I, I have all the friends I need mm-hmm. in this life. Uh, I love my children. <laughs> love my wife. I have, I'm not going anywhere. I have nothing else to do. We've moved our entire operation from San Antonio and Los Angeles to here. We have a 4,000 square foot studio. I'm not going anywhere, however you are. So we're going to get you off the fucking board. 
and there's nothing you can do about it. So-